Welcome back. You're watching uh, Star of Central with me, Nentara Rai. It's, of course, uh, the first live show in the new year. Uh, uh, a lot has been said about 2019 being a fantastic one for the startup universe uh, with funding optimism at an all-time high. We saw several new unicorns as well. Now let's uh, get you an interesting conversation with, which we had with one of the best uh, venture capitalists out there. Chirate Ventures, uh, one of the most active ones that you have there with big bets from First Cry to Lenskart. Uh, you also have Bounce and CureFit uh, raising massive follow-on funding. They're all part of uh, Chirate's portfolio. So what's it betting on in the new year? Here's a masterclass with Chirate. Here's Sudhir Sethi, the founder and chairman, in conversation with ET Now's Rahul Deyama. A lot of this year has been dominated about talks of a larger economic slowdown, global implications. Startups have raised money and how we've added a lot many unicorns this year, probably one every second month. Uh, do you see this euphoria, enthusiasm, so to say, continue as we move into 2020 as well? The answer is a big yes. Uh, traditional India is going through stress. Hmm. I think it will continue to go through stress, uh, but I'm not the economist here. Yeah. Uh, however, when traditional India goes through stress, uh, what it means for entrepreneurs who are perhaps working in traditional India that there's a problem to be solved. That mm. problem, if it has been endemic and it has not been solved for a long time, uh, potentially can be solved by using technology. So at, at any point of time when a traditional economy is under stress, you will find more entrepreneurs coming out. You'll mm. find better quality uh, products and services coming out. You'll find uh, the quality of business plans coming out is much better. So I think India is passing through the phase where we are seeing all of that at this point of time. And I see that uh, you know the traditional economy mm. is $3 trillion and to that extent it's fundamentally uh, changing at a pace which perhaps is slow. Uh, hopefully it become faster but that's a great opportunity for uh, new products, new services, new business model, new revenue models new entrepreneurs, some of them serial coming in, solving yeah. these problems and building new companies. And that is going to continue to happen for the next 5 or 10 years. So you're optimistic not only for 2020, but you're saying for the next 5 and 10 years. But you know, uh, sir, the larger concern, and we've seen those murmurs really ha have really started off about how advisors are being given to entrepreneurs. Um, of course, you know, we've been talking about unit economics and building solid businesses for a long time now, but all the more now. So uh, do you see that sort of getting impacted, that uh, purse strings will have to be tightened? Uh, the focus has to increasingly really be on unit economics as the year comes by, because the sense is that the winter has arrived and uh, funding as much as it was available this year will not be available in the coming year? I think there is capital available hmm. first and foremost. The second thing is when you're building a company you cannot move away from unit economics. Uh, you know we've been working with our entrepreneurs where the focus on unit economics cannot go away uh, as such. So you want to build any, any entrepreneur or VC wants to back a good company and they have to have unit economics which are going to be measured on a uh, monthly basis, uh, in some cases a weekly basis. Uh, so I don't see the conflict, I actually mm. don't see the conflict. Building good companies is, having good econ is about having good unit economics. All right, and that wouldn't ideally change uh, given the circumstances. But uh, I wanted to be candid on this one. Valuations have, of course, been talked about so much more. Uh, are valuations a lot more inflated now? Will we see a lot of correction as we move ahead? We are already seeing some steps. Of course, it's cyclical in terms of how a bit of layoffs happen. Mm -hmm. That is something that we see every two years. But on valuations, what, what really is your take? And will we see a lot of this sort of turn to IPOs as well? Because after exits and you know Flipkart, which you were a part of, uh, we haven't really seen a lot of exits really come by for the ecosystem as well. So there are three questions yeah, in your yeah. single question. First and foremost, now, I think exits uh, has multiple uh, points to it. One, exit is a discipline for a VC. I think VCs have to learn how to exit. Uh, second is the method of exits. It is perhaps a myth that IPOs will become the biggest exit point. Uh, for venture investors, secondaries are getting bigger and bigger. There are larger pools of capital coming into the country and those pools of capital are willing to take the baton from a VC and, and fund the company and then move forward to com uh, a company could go public down the line as such. So I think 
there is no dearth of capital uh, in the market for good companies to do the needful. Valuations are there because uh, companies inherently are better, quality of entrepreneurs is better, quality of products and services is better. So I think that's happening. The second is that you have a number of players fighting for the, uh, so there's a demand and supply issue. Do understand that the number of experienced VCs in the country has gone down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So effectively, the maturity level of the VCs is also an influence on whether there is a big fight, if I say, if I may say, for valuations. I think the number of mature VCs who have gone through, let's say, four fund cycles, cycles. right, is less um, today. Um, there, I mean, number of four fund cycles is more, but fundamentally the Active VCs, really active VCs in the country, is perhaps seven or eight mm -hmm. uh, overall. Mm -hmm. So I don't think uh, there is intense competition. Uh, everybody goes into the market, finds good uh, companies in the market space, and backs them uh, overall. Uh, so I think that's the broader stream is um, very good quality companies coming in. If I have to rephrase that question, will we see uh, valuations really correct? in the coming year? At early stage, there's nothing to correct in my mind. At later stages, good companies will get better valuations. We're seeing a lot of startups really solve for India. Uh, and, and this is a question that we ask uh, entrepreneurs, VCs all the time. But when will we really see a Google or a WhatsApp-like company from India? Um, will it take a lot more time? Uh, a lot of innovative models really that have really come up in the next two years. But when will we really see that big movers? So I think by the by that question i understand by google and whatsapp not clones but large companies okay india is a smaller economy so to that extent the large companies emerging will be a little bit slower as the economy grows bigger uh, it will be there what we have seen is very interesting um, indian entrepreneurs are solving real problems we have invested in indian entrepreneurs solving real problems Many other VCs do the same thing. Now, the next phase is very important. Solving a problem, building a brand, building a company, which then dominates the Indian market space, and then becomes global. Mm -hmm. Okay. So effectively, if I look at our portfolio alone, out of 80-odd companies, 21 have gone global. And the footprint is across 30 countries. Oh. Consumer companies have gone global. We just have a company called Emotix launching a Miko 2 uh, a robotic product for children in the uh, companion robotic space or a company called Play Shifu, uh, they, we have launched, they, they have launched their products in the US and UK and Middle East, right? So consumer companies going outside the country is a first in the last mm -hmm. three years mm -hmm. overall. So the way India will build large companies is not just survive on the Indian market space. It is uh, dominate the Indian market space like a Lenskart, like a First Cry, like a CureFit, and then go global. So today, all these companies have operations in Middle East and Southeast Asia, and some of them actually, like an Emotix or a Pleshifu, have gone to US. So to me, 2020 onwards is when these green shoots of going global by Indian companies in the new economy space will actually get wings, and slowly the bulk of the revenue will start coming from international. That's a five-year process right now. Some of our companies like Emotix uh, or PlaySafe or Play Simple, the bulk of the company uh, revenue is already international, by the way. Okay? So this, to me, is a very, very strong thing. Building large brands from India is happened already, though in a small way. And that will be the game changer. And that's the game changer. That's, the, that's building a global company. Uh, the, the message is WhatsApp is a global company, Google is a global company, and so are the others. India but, is now producing global companies uh, of smaller scale. What are the sectors that you really see will stand out? Uh, or do you have all of them covered under the four that is consumer, media no, tech, software, SaaS, yeah. uh, uh, fintech, and health tech that is? I think these four are broader sectors, but we are very excited about the deep technology sector. The deep technology sector is where Indian entrepreneurs are now building very deep technology, which has uh, perhaps not seen the light of day in many other countries across the world. And again, the examples I took. Um, Miko 2 from Emotix, world's first conversational robot can initiate a conversation and does not exist anywhere in the world. Or f products in the AR, VR space from PlaySafe, or PlaySimple in the gaming company. 
So, today deep tech to my mind is going to be a massive massive because India is finally producing companies which are very deep technology. If you look at the yesterday years, they are all marketplaces, yeah. they are all e-commerce, yeah. right? We do not require deep tech and there is not nothing wrong with that. But today entrepreneurs are producing those deep tech companies. So, next 5 years do not be surprised that uh, there will be another 10 to 20 large deep tech companies emerging from India. Deep tech is what we should be watching out for in the media as well. A last couple of questions, you know, at Chirate, uh, you're in the process of closing your fourth fund as well. You're, you're very optimistic about how the next five, ten years will be for the ecosystem. Uh, what is really your checklist? How should startups really pitch to Chirate uh, and get it right as well? What's really the secret sauce? I think uh, there is no secret sauce. Uh, write to us and we will respond. Uh, and, and, and you respond to every uh, email that comes in? Every email should get a response. I, we may not be that efficient, I must add. But uh, I think the pitch tech is very important. Coming through a reference really helps. Okay? And the reason for that is it's very simple. There are a lot of friends yeah. uh, for, for people like us in the market space. They are ex-entrepreneurs, they are current entrepreneurs, they are our advisory board members, they are ecosystem players, they are Portfolio angels, companies, there are yeah. portfolios. right? So, if you know somebody, somebody who's actually done the vetting a little bit, okay, that's a very good way to gain attention uh, overall. But fundamentally, we truly believe that uh, we are responsive. So, if there's a if there's a lapse, there's you know, write to us and say you're not responsive. We'll respond. <laughs> or, or tell us, and then we will come and uh, tell them that you know you've yeah. missed on this and But you know, uh, do you want to elaborate on the don'ts really? What does not really make it to the cut? What's a big no-no while really pitching to a VC like Chirate? I think it's very crucial to have a cohesive, coherent communication, couple of pages, which explain a lot. Because I mean, we are seeing two and a half, three thousand a year, right? You don't want to get lost in the. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of people looking at that. It is a face-to-face -face or a manual process uh, overall. So that's why if you if you go to our website, there's a detailed outline how to prepare a deck. Yeah. Um, but long decks don't serve if you can't have a message on what product is, what market is, what's the service. Very standard things, right? In a very small deck. 5 to 10 pages, right? It is very difficult after that. But grooming to go to a VC is very important. Uh, all VCs, to my mind, are passionate about entrepreneurs. And we like meeting entrepreneurs, okay? So it is very important to be, uh, you know, we learn from entrepreneurs. <laughs> Please understand, there is a problem being solved, and we meet 10 entrepreneurs who solve the same problem. So instead of, you know, us, uh, let us say quote unquote teaching, we are actually learning from the entrepreneur and that is a big learning for us. So, so it is very important that we meet you. So make sure we meet you. Anything in 2019 that you went like, oh I missed it, you know, uh, some, the misses really from 2019 and you wish you had back those companies, do you want to? I would, I would turn that into a lot, as a VC we are always um, raising capital. What we did not miss was we raised a lot of rupee capital. That is very crucial to us. But in the same category, what we did miss was I wish we could have raised more in rupee capital. I think it is important for that India realizes at our level, at government level, at policy level, at industry level, a lot that of the capital. capital which is available in India is enormous. Uh, one report says 3 trillion of family office money. Now that money has to be channelized into risk capital. Um, I keep repeating this but uh, the BSE 30 index companies in the last 10 years uh, spent uh, 166 billion dollars in share buybacks and dividend distribution. If in the last 10 years if you look at the amount of capital which VCs have invested in private equity people that's almost 160 billion dollars. So this is a parallel universe as you rightly said. But out of the 166 billion dollars which was given out as dividend distribution and uh, share buybacks by the BSC 30, none of that went into risk capital in creating new companies. If I just uh, transport your question from past to the next one year or two years, let's fix the challenges which are there for 
making 1 percent to 10 percent in the industry as rupee capital because that is an engine for growth. That capital must come in, it will lead international capital by a leverage of maybe 1 is to 5. 